Hello, I'm Dave Baring, Technical Director at TriStar, and welcome to another Tech Talk. Um, this video is going to be uh, kind of short and to the point, and what I want to talk to you about is, uh, again, based on a lot of questions that we get, a lot of confusion uh, regarding the Rulon products. Uh, as you're probably all well aware, if you know anything about TriStar or watch any of our videos, TriStar is the, um, the only distributor of the Rulon products here in North America. Uh, we have a lot of experience with the product and so I wanted to pass on some information about the different Rulon materials that are most common and some of the common misconceptions about what these materials are. Uh, so I want to start with the, the basics, the, the very early stages of the Rulon product line which was back in the 19, early 1950s. Uh, the very first material that was made was Rulon A. Um, that is one of our two maroon materials, Rulon A and Rulon LD were the original compounds that were called out back in the 50s. Uh, in 1988, um, A and LD got changed to AR and LR because at that time uh, one of the constituents in that maroon pigment was found to be a carcinogenic. And, uh, so the uh, Dixon engineers had to scramble to find uh, another similar type uh, constituent that gave us the same wear and friction properties which they did do so what you'll find sometimes if you've got some drawings that are older than 1988 you you will run across Rulon A and Rulon LD but rest assured that it's now AR and LR they're the same products and uh, have been around as replacements obviously obviously now for 26 years so they have proven themselves quite well so Rulon AR um, the, the primary application for AR is for seals, gaskets, um, things that require some flexibility, some good wear properties. Um, the AR has, has extremely good tribological values, which means wear and friction. Um, but because it's flexible, you can use it for things like rod uh, seals and piston seals, uh, cup seals, um, spring energized U-cups, uh, flip seals like for compressors, things like that. It's, it's very flexible, yet it has extremely good wear uh, and friction properties. The LR was the next generation of that, and it was basically uh, just a minor change in the percentage of filler that made that now a stiffer material, had less deformation. In fact, the, the old call-out of LD was low deformation. So the LR is our go-to material for applications where the uh, the uh, need is for a bearing grade material. So AR for seals, LR for bearings. Uh, some other little tidbits of information for you, both AR and LR are LOX approved. They have extremely low outgassing and vacuum, so uh, they are approved under NASA specs for uh, space applications. Um, AR and LR also require the mating hardware to be at least a 35 Rockwell C because the nature of the fillers is that they can be fairly abrasive. So uh, you want to take that into consideration if you're going through the selection process. The next item is Rulon J. Uh, Rulon J's trademark color is uh, a gold. Um, it's kind of a goldish tan color. Uh, that is a material that has another polymer as its filler. And the Rulon J was developed primarily for running against soft mating surfaces. So if you're running against aluminum or stainless steel or even another plastic, uh, the Rulon J is a good choice for you in, in that area for a bearing. Rulon J also makes a very good seal. Again, similarly to the LR, it can be used for flip seals, uh, cup seals, um, and, and uh, traditional rod and piston seals. Uh, the Rulon J is one of the more expensive materials, but it also has the lowest coefficient of friction of any of the Rulon products out there, um, as well as some extremely good wear properties. Uh, when you look at the wear data on the Rulon J, the K factor is about as low as you can go with a polymer. Um, so Rulon J, again, soft mating hardware, uh, low friction requirements, um, and, and just overall good long-term wear. The, the warning with the Rulon J is that it does have some issues with uh, acidic environments, so you want to avoid that. It can also be uh, 
a little bit iffy if you're going to use it in a steam or hot water application. So keep that in mind as well. The next ones I want to talk about are our four FDA materials. Um, the very first FDA Rulon was actually Rulon 123, which um, is black. And um, a lot of people shy away from a black material in an FDA application, and rightfully so. But in the early, early days, when they were looking for a way to get a bearing grade material that was FDA approved, they were able to get a combination of filler and PTFE that met the FDA standards um, for FDA contact uh, applications for both food and pharmaceutical. Since then, there have been three new materials that came along. The Rulon 641 uh, back in the 1980s was the first white specifically bearing grade PTFE based material on the marketplace. Uh, it was the first one to get uh, FDA compliance with the new combination of materials. Um, it was brought, the, the request was brought to us by one of the largest food manufacturers in, in the world and they had a very specific laundry list of things that they needed that material to, to do which was run against stainless or aluminum. Had to be able to go into fast freeze applications or hot oil uh, had to be sterilizable with all the different cleaning compounds that they use, uh, had to have good wear properties, uh, good thermal stability, and the 641, after a couple years of, of hard work by the lab folks, uh, was developed and put out in the market. Since then, there's been two more products that have come on stream, 1337 and 1439, also both have FDA compliance. Um, the 1337 is the material that uh, is really becoming the fast friend of those that are running in completely dry environments. Uh, 641 can go both uh, wet or dry. 1439, on the other hand, is one that we recommend uh, for fully submerged applications. So if you've got uh, blenders or mixers or something like that where you're working in different fluid environments, the 1439 is an excellent choice for that. I will also say that the 641 and the 1439 are now both USP Class 6 approved. So if you have a situation uh, specifically in pharmaceutical, um, keep that in mind because those are the only two materials on the market that are PTFE based that meet USP Class 6. Rulon 142 is a material that was developed for a very specific application and has since grown into other applications. Uh, the 142 is a uh, metallic filler and specifically bronze. It has a very high resistance to deformation under load. It was developed originally specifically for machine tool guideways and uh, the reason for it was simply because they needed an inexpensive material, they needed a product that uh, was compatible with uh, the marketplace at that time which was the Turk IB. Uh, the industry was looking for cost savings, better performance, um, but still a material that uh, uh, could meet all of the standards of the machine tool industry worldwide. Um, the 142 um, has since been used in a lot of other applications. We've got it in bridge slide pads uh, for vibration pads. We've got it in the upper and lower guides on uh, shearing machines and stamping machines and things like that. Really any place where you've got linear motion um, the Rulon 142 is definitely one of the better candidates for that. Um, it's available in Skive tape from 15 thousandths up to uh, an eighth inch thick and uh, it's easy to work with etched on one side for bondability so if you're looking for a good material for linear slides the Rulon 142 is a very cost-effective uh, material for you to, to use. Rulon XL is uh, one of the newer materials. XL was developed for applications where it's uh, primarily sliding applications but it can also be used for bushings as well. The XL is a little bit unique in that it's, uh, it's a slightly different combination of materials, all polymeric, um, but it's, it's a little bit stiffer than the traditional Rulon materials and the filler that's used is an extremely good material when it comes to thermal properties and um, um, sliding friction properties as well. Um, where the XL really shines is if it's running against aluminum. So if you've got uh, 
If you've ever seen our shooting star, uh, we've used XL, for instance, in masts on uh, military vehicles. It's an excellent material where they're using aluminum tubular uh, uh, rectangular tubes for the mast, and they use the XL for the guide pads uh, on those tubes. Um, XL, though, is a, a very, very good bearing material in general. Um, it is a little bit pricier, uh, but definitely something worth looking at, especially if you're going to run against aluminum. It's, it's the best material we have in the Rulon family. Rulon 945. This is the last one I'm going to talk about. There's other Rulons, but this is the last one I want to talk about because these really kind of give you a, a, a big picture view of, of the key materials. 945 is a material that was developed specifically for the compressor industry, mostly the dry compressor industry. So applications in the oil and gas industry where the traditional carbon graphite materials um, just don't really give you the life expectancy you want. The 945 is a superior material for applications for rider rings, bull rings, tangential seals, any place where you've got uh, high velocity motion, you need good thermal transfer properties. The 945 is excellent when it comes to heat dissipation, but more importantly, it has superior def deformation resistance and a very low thermal expansion rate. So from the standpoint of controlling uh, seal design, keeping good to close tolerances, maintaining good wear properties, good heat dissipation, the 945 is a very, very outstanding material to use in that environment. Those are the ones I'm going to cover. If you, uh, if you go on, on our website and check out the Rulon uh, Materials Guide, there are some other ones in there that uh, may have some application in your world, but uh, I wanted to just mention these because these are the materials that we work the most with, the ones that we get the most questions about, and uh, so I wanted to just give you kind of a, a brief primer on which ones um, to take a look at first. Thanks again for watching. Uh, we appreciate you spending some time with us. And uh, again, if you haven't signed up for our blogs, please do it. They're worthwhile. Thanks and have a good day.